Welcome back to the It's Your Career series. I am Jared H. Smith, and today in episode two, we're going to be reading It's Your Record from the MyNavyHR.Navy.Mil website for U.S. Navy Supply Corps officers. And this episode actually applies to most every staff or line officer in the U.S. Navy, but I will be commenting from a U.S. Navy Supply Corps officer perspective. So let's get into it. It's your record. And before we dive into the content itself, I would like to explain the reason for beginning with It's Your Record in this It's Your Career series of playbooks. The record is what gets promoted, not the individual officer. So your knowledge about records management and the activities you must do uh, in jobs and during your military service journey, whether or not that's for five years or 25 plus, it all hinges around how you manage this record. So it's a critically important aspect of your military career journey. And that's why I am starting with this It's Your Record playbook. It is the most important one in my opinion, with respect to ensuring you promote on time and do what you want to do throughout service life. Now, this version of the It's Your Record playbook was updated in 2021, so it's recent. Uh, quick overview of the table of contents from page three. We'll start out with the purpose, the getting started section, and then we'll dive into the meat of the performance summary record, PSR, the Officer Summary Record, OSR, the Officer Data Card, ODC, and the Official Military Personnel File, OMPF. Then we'll close it out, and there's a directory at the end of this document for you to reach directly out to the desk at the Office of Naval Personnel uh, Supply Corps branch. The purpose of this playbook is to assist the U.S. Navy Supply Corps officer in maintaining an accurate and up-to-date military personnel file. This playbook will help you ensure that your record accurately reflects your professional experiences and accomplishments to maximize your potential for statutory and administrative board selection, as well as detailing assignments. Your record is your military resume and is up to the individual officer to keep it current. And I'll caveat this with the fact that records get promoted, not people. So take that for what it's worth, but it's your record that gets promoted and statutory and administrative boards, and therefore accuracy and, and it being up to date is critically important. Getting started. A great starting point to check your record for accuracy is Bupers Online, BOL. BOL is a single point of entry application for logging on to numerous web-based applications maintained by the Bureau of Naval Personnel, BUPERS, and Navy Personnel Command, NPC. Among the applications available through BOL are your Officer Data Card, ODC, Officer Summary Record, OSR, Performance Summary Record, PSR, and Official Military Personnel File, OMPF. The PSR, Performance Summary Record, summarizes performance history from fit reps and is viewed by statutory and administrative selection boards. The OSR, Officer Summary Record, summarizes the officer's experience, education, and qualifications and is viewed by statutory and administrative selection boards. The Officer Data Card, ODC, contains qualifications, promotion history, education, specialties, billet information, and personal data used for career development. Your Officer Data Card, ODC, is not viewed by statutory or administrative selection boards. Caveat, though, that the Officer Data Card does feed the Officer Summary Record. So, there are no changes directly made to the OSR. Uh, all fields in the officer summary record are fed by entries into the officer data card. And the individual can't make changes to those entries. Those have to be done um, by an administrative personnel uh, at BUPERS typically. The official military personnel file is a repository of documents such as fitness reports or fit reps and awards, which reflect performance and professional qualifications. Request for removal of duplicates of, or errors may be submitted to the email address mill underscore ompf chg at navy.mil. Make sure document number of requested change is included. There's a link 
on the middle of page two uh, for more information. The continuity report determines if there are any gaps in your fitness report reporting date continuity. You can also see status of submitted fit reps and rejection reasons if applicable. Upon logging into BOL, select the CCA slash fit rep slash eval reports button and then select the performance evaluation continuity report button. Officer photo, while NAV admin 247 slash 20 prohibits the use of official photographs for all officer selection boards, an updated officer photograph is still required. You can update your official photo using BOL's automated service labeled Officer Photo. Physical Readiness Information Management System, PRIMS. This is a database containing physical fitness assessment PFA results. It is accessed, it is accessed through BOL also. One other note, uh, you can also access your individual medical readiness IMR information through BOL also. Performance summary record, bottom of page two. The PSR is viewed by every member of a statutory or administrative selection board. It summarizes the pertinent information from fit reps received during your naval career. Since the importance of this document cannot be overstated, it is strongly recommended that you review your PSR regularly and often in your career preferably with a mentor. How to mark up your PSR. There are two record products reviewed by statutory and administrative selection boards, your OSR and PSR. This section will discuss how to mark up your performance summary record and subsequently review it using visualizations that are common in boards. I recommend that you mark up a PSR in the following order. And they've got eight steps here for marking up your performance summary record, which is a congregation of all of your fitness reports throughout your officer career. First, you underline the last report of each tour, each duty station. Second, you annotate each pay grade, known as PG. Third, you annotate each new reporting senior, typically RS for short. Fourth, you annotate any PRT failures, which are indicated by an F in the PRT column. Fifth, you annotate concurrent reports, uh, that's a report type of CC for concurrent. Six, you compare individual trait average, the ITA, to the summary group average, the SGA, and reporting senior cumulative average, uh, known as the R slash S C U M, and otherwise referred to as the RISCA, R S C A, reporting senior cumulative average. Six uh, A, you annotate where the individual trait average exceeds the RISCA, then you annotate on 6B, where you your ITA is less than the RISCA. And lastly, 6C, you compare the ITA to the summary group average, or SGA, for reports in competition. Those are the other officers that you are competing against for that reporting period at that duty assignment. The seventh in the steps is to look for the date period gaps or overlaps from one fit rep to the next. You're going to exclude concurrent report type fit reps. And lastly, identify any air gaps. An air gap is a situation where the promotion recommendation is below the highest available or possible entry. Examples are shown in the middle of page three. And basically, uh, on the fit rep traits, uh, which are the, the, the numbers that are calculated to give you a individual trait average, uh, to, to the right of that is, is the must promote, early promote, or promotable selections. And if, if you could have been given a must promote or an early promote and you receive something less, then that's called an air gap. And those are not good for your record. So if you see that happen, you need to figure out why your reporting senior is doing that. Um, and if it's a mistake, get that fixed because otherwise that will tank your, your chances of getting selected on a promotion board. How to review your PSR. As you review and identify good and bad PSR entries, be mindful of the following which may explain the entry. 1A, new pay grade. 1B, new station. 1C, concurrent reports. 1D, new reporting seniors. 1E, number of months in the fit rep reporting period. That's column marked as MOS for months on your PSR. Second step in reviewing your PSR, tour quality. Indicated by tough visible tours, organizations, responsibility, or nominative billets. 
Step three in reviewing your PSR, tour diversity, indicated by tours of increasing responsibility across a range of different platforms, weapon systems, fleets, or combatant commander areas of responsibility. Fourth, analyze the delta between the individual trade average and the RISCA, that is the reporting senior cumulative average. So you want to, as you want as much space above the RSCA to your individual trade average as possible. That's a really strong metric for you for that reporting seniors average. The closer to the reporting seniors average, the the less um, the less beneficial it is for your record. And then if it's below the RSCA, especially if you've already been with that reporting senior for a couple of to a couple of reporting periods, then that looks negatively upon upon you through your record. Last step in reviewing the PSCR, if fit reps are available, look at comments in Block 41 that give context to the performance summary record. These include soft breakouts, promotion recommendations, stuck in traffic situations where multiple officers in the same pay grade and promotion recommendations limited by policy. Uh, managing the RISCA and anything else that can explain noteworthy items found on the performance summary record. Look at screening recommendations in Block 40 for progressing recommendations. There's a, an example PSR at the top of page 4, and it's only one example of numerous iterations you may see. However, it can provide a foundation for you to learn how to review and mark up records and or mentor other officers. Fitness Reports Fit Reps during record reviews, if you identify fitness report errors or missing reports, follow the procedures outlined in the Navy Performance Evaluation Instruction, Bupers Instruction 1610.10 ECHO. Sample fit rep administrative or supplemental change letters can be found on the Supply Corps Career Counselor page. Letters requesting corrections or changes that may be sent to the Officer Fitness Reports branch and an address is found uh, between page 4 and 5. Bupers Online offers an automated fit rep continuity application. Upon logging into BOL, select the CCA Fit Rep Eval Report button and then the Fitness Report Continuity Report button. This report will display any gaps in reporting continuity along with the status of submitted fitness reports. Common, interest, common entries are listed here, such as validated fit rep pending acceptance to the PSR and officer's record. Complete. Fit rep has been processed and entered into the officer's record. Purged. Fit rep has been removed from the officer's record. Rejected. Fit rep has been rejected due to an error. Contact your command administration first and then PERS 32 for correction procedures. PERS 32 can be contacted through askmncc at navy.mil. And be warned, the askmncc at navy.mil address goes to a general uh, help desk Type situation, and then they farm out your request to the appropriate desk. Uh, my experience as of late 2021 with that entity has been less than ideal. Um, so again, you've got to own this stuff and drive any inquiries that you send in to the MNCC desk. Uh, you got to drive those to completion. So stay on top of that stuff. Lastly, separated and classified. Fit rep has been received, separated from the summary letter, and classified as a Fit rep, bison eval for processing. Please contact the Supply Corps Career Counselor if you have any questions or want a record review. Not only that, I'm happy to do a record review for you as well. So reach out to me on the socials and we'll find a way to get your record over to me so that I can give it a, a good hard look for you. Officer summary record on page five. The OSR is one of two documents, the other being your performance summary record, PSR viewed by board members during statutory and administrative boards. With the exception of awards, the information contained in your OSR is fed from your ODC. That's your officer data card, remember? The special qualifications block of your OSR combines the nomenclature of additional qualification designator, AQD, and Navy Officer Billet Classification, NOBC, codes. It is important that you learn the associated nomenclature from these codes as you become more senior, as OSRs are the product displayed during boards, vices, ODCs. Below is one example of the numerous iterations you may see on an officer summary record. And they give an example of an OSR here and point out some different important items on it. It's crucially important that you don't wait to figure out uh, all this stuff, right? This is, this, is, this is what gets promoted on promotion boards and on administrative boards. 
and you need to you need to understand the stuff coming out of the BQC so that one it gives you insights into what all you can do while in the Navy and then two you got to be managing your record early and often so that when you do fall in zone for a for a board your your record's ready and you're not scrambling to um to catch up or to fix mistakes that could cost you a selection awards to get an approved award certificate into your OMPF four steps one check to see that the award has been entered into the Navy Department of Awards web service that's NDAS by logging on to BOL click on Navy Personnel Command Document Services tab then select NDAS from the left side of the screen click on search awards here you can search for personal and unit awards if you click on personal award search your personal awards that are currently in NDAS will be displayed BOL NDAS is the authoritative source for Navy personal, unit, campaign, and expeditionary medals data. Second step to get an approved award certificate into your OMPF. If it is reflecting accurately in BOL NDAS but not in your OMPF, print your full SSN in the upper right corner of the award certificate and send a copy to PERS 313 Navy Personnel Command or email the address M-I-L-L underscore Navy Awards dot F-C-T at Navy dot mil. And that's a functional account man, uh, monitored by multiple individuals. You know, or lastly, ask your command to mail it. But if you ask your command to mail it, make sure you're following up to ensure it makes it into your record so you get credit for it. All right? Don't depend on the admin team to, to babysit your record. It's your responsibility. Number three, if it has not been entered into BOL NDAS, contact your administrative office for assistance. It is their responsibility to update BOL NDAS with your award in accordance with the NDAS user's guide. But again, you got you to gotta make sure they get it done because they're busy too. Lastly, step four, once an award has been submitted into BOL NDAS, the application will send copies of the wet science certificate and OPNAV 1650-3 to the member's OMPF. Do not mail these documents to PERS 313. For personal awards, Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal and higher, NDAS trusted agents or admin offices and NDAS authorities are to enter awards into BOL NDAS along with the wet science certificate and the application will electronically file the OPNAV 1650-3 and wet science certificate to the member's official military personnel file. BOL NDAS is the authoritative source for awards. Awards will not be incorporated into the official military personnel file, OMPF, if they are not reflected in BOL NDAS. Older awards not reflecting in BOL NDAS must be entered into NDAS by the awarding authority's administrative department or the member's current administrative department after authentication of validity of each award. If the awards listed on the OSR are incorrect, the Data Quality Management Branch, BUPER 072, can assist. The Data Quality Management Branch manages the functionality and data contained within many of the Navy corporate data systems. Visit My Navy HR's Decorations and Medals page for more information. Officer Data Card, middle of page 6. If Officer Data Card corrections are needed, access your ODC and BOL and click on the hyperlink in the field needing correction. This will reveal an explanation of the block and the point of contact for making any required corrections. Several different applications provide the data reflected on your Officer Data Card. Data from your ODC transfers into your OSR, which the boards review, so make sure your ODC is accurate. The Supply Corps Career Counselor webpage has additional resources to understand your record. Now we're going to dive into different aspects of the officer data card, which again feed the officer summary record. Okay, the first is your academic profile code. The next is going to be formal education. Third, we'll discuss Navy subspecialty system codes. And then we'll talk service schools, additional qualification designators, and then finally, Navy Officer Bill of Classification Codes. So, underneath the Officer Data Card are Academic Profile Codes. This three-digit code resides in Block 47 of your Officer Data Card, and a detailed description of the code can be found in It's Your Education. Officers must complete the application process on the Naval Postgraduate School website. There's a link at the bottom of page 6. And submit sealed official transcripts to NPS in order to have their academic profile code, APC, calculated for inclusion into their official record. All officers should have their academic profile code calculated as soon as possible after commissioning and then updated as required. You can mail transcripts to an address located at the bottom of page 6 in this playbook. 
Next, formal education. PERS 45 ECHO updates officer records with formal education from civilian colleges, universities, and Navy-sponsored postgraduate education. Example given, Naval Postgraduate School, service colleges, or civilian institution programs, such as 810 and 811. To have your formal education entered into your record, send or have your college or university send official sealed final transcripts for any formal education degree not listed or improperly listed in Blocks 54 through 60 of your ODC to an address listed at the top of page 7. Schools can send official transcripts via email to mil underscore pers 450fct at navy.mil, and that email address is available on page 7. Next, Navy Subspecialty System Codes. Subspecialty System Codes, SSP for short, reflect professional disciplines required through advanced education, functional training, and significant experience. PERS 45 manually reviews those officers serving in an SSP coded billet upon completion of the billet or after graduating from a Navy funded postgraduate program and places a corresponding code in block 66 to 69 of your ODC. You can earn only one SSP per tour. If you would like to request an SSP based on experience in a non coded billet, submit your request, so that sample packages available on the Career Counselor website, to the Supply Corps Career Counselor. Next, we're going to cover about 13 subspecialty codes for Supply Corps officers. And they typically include 1301, Supply Acquisition or Distribution Management. This is not awarded for operational tours. Second is 1302, Supply Inventory or Supply Chain Management, which I actually have. 1304, Transportation Logistics Management. 1306, Acquisition and Contract Management. 1307, Petroleum Management. 1309, Logistics Information Technology. I have that one too. 2000, National Security Studies, War College. 3000, Resource Management and Analysis, General. 3110, 3111, 3112 is Financial Management. 3121, 3122 is Logistics and Transportation Management, which I've got that one as well. 3210, 3211, 3212, and 3213 is Operations Research Analysis. 4000 is General Applied Disciplines. And 6511 is Requirements Management. Now, there's suffixes that go on the end of each of those subspecialty codes that we just discussed. And there's three different categories of subspecialty code suffixes. There's the experience suffix, the Navy-funded education suffix, and the, self -edu and the self-funded education suffix. For experience suffixes, there's the S and the R. The subspecialty code suffix S is for 18 or more consecutive months in a subspecialty coded billet. The subspecialty code suffix R is two separate experience tours at least 18 months each. And for me, for example, I've got the 1302S and the 3121S, uh, where I had two two different tours of 18 months in length that I actually documented through my fit reps the experience I needed in order to have those subspecialty codes awarded. So the second type of suffix is the Navy funded education. There's three types, the T, the P, and the Q suffixes. For T, it's currently enrolled in Navy funded master's program. So if you're going up for a board and that subspec is not listed in your in your record, you want to get that in there so the board knows that you're in an education program. Now, the next type of suffix for education is the P, which is a Navy funded graduate degree awarded after graduation. And then typically that P is going to change to a, the, the third type of suffix in this education category, which is Q, Navy funded graduate degree followed by an experience tour of at least 18 months. And that's what my 1309 logistics information systems is a 1309Q because I went to Naval Postgraduate School, got an MBA in Information Systems, and then followed that with a tour at NAFSA Business Systems Center um, where that, that P suffix turned into a Q. And then lastly, self-funded education categories for suffixes. There's a G suffix and an F suffix. The G suffix is non-Navy funded graduate degree meeting 70% of core skill requirements, CSRs, and we'll talk about those a little bit later. And then the F suffix for non-Navy funded graduate degree, followed by an experience tour of at least 18 months. So they asterisked uh, three of the subspecialty codes that we previously mentioned, the 2000 National Security Studies War College, the 3000 Resource Management Analysis General, 
and then lastly the 4,000 general applied disciplines. And those three subspecialties are awarded upon completion of a graduate degree from a requisite college degree program. These SSPs does not change based on follow-on experience tours, however. Subspecialty codes and application guidance can be found on PERS 451 Education and Subspecialty page on the My Navy HR website. This website also provides information on critical skills requirements and educational skills requirements for each subspecialty. And a quick side note here, those two documents are extremely important when it comes to getting the experience in your record um, that you need to demonstrate CSRs and ESRs um, as it pertains to your acquisition professional membership pursuits as well. I didn't realize that until um, well long into my NASA Business Systems Center tour, uh, but it's a it's a little known fact that you'll want to try to co cross-reference those different requirements in order to get your acquisition experience and your DEWIA you do we have credits? Service schools. Every supply corps officer should have the basic qualification course and basic leadership documented in this block. To have service schools documented in block 52 of your officer data card, you must submit a request email to the My Navy Career Counselor Help Desk at askmncc at navy.mil. State, state in the following information. Please update block 52 of my ODC with the following service schools with course title, school location, completion date, course duration, and three-digit school code per the Knox manual, which we'll talk about later. Uh, then you'll note that your JST and transcript certificate of completion is attached. So you'll want to attach supporting documents in portable document format PDF file. A list of all service school codes can be found in Appendix C of the Manual of Navy Officer Manpower and Personnel Classifications. That's NOOCS Volume 2. If the school isn't listed in the NOOCS, such as Log Tech Advanced, it cannot be listed as a service school. Officer Data Card Additional Qualification Designator, AQD. Additional Qualification Designator codes identify the attainment of skills and knowledge as recognized by a competent authority, which are in addition to those identified by the Officer Designator Grade, Naval Officer Billet Classification, or Subspecialty. AQDs are assigned by the Cognizant Navy Personnel Command, NPC, assignment officers in coordination with your respective placement officers. A list of all AQDs can be found on the My Navy HR website in Part D of the Manual of Navy Officer Manpower and Personnel Classifications, Volume 1. We'll go over some common Supply Corps AQDs assigned by the Supply Corps Career Counselor, such as Operational Tours, Commander Milestone, Captain Major Command Ashore, and Warfare Qualifications, and then other qualifications. So AQD operational tours, you'll get AQD such as 928, completed one operational tour, 92A, you're assigned to a second operational tour while maintaining the 928 in your record, or upon completion of the second operational tour, you get a 929, it's completed two operational tours. AQD for commander milestones, you get AQD such as 2D1, command eligible, 935, supply corps, completion of commander milestone, or 9-3 Alpha, selected as a Supply Corps Commander Milestone Screening Board and completed a minimum of 18 months in an approved Supply Corps Shore Command Billet. Uh, the next category is Captain Major Command Shore, where you get the 9-3 Bravo. And then you also have AQDs for your warfare qualification areas, uh, such as the Lima Alpha 8 for Supply Surface Warfare, the Bravo Charlie 8 for Naval Aviation Supply Officer, and then the Sierra Quebec 1 for Supply Submarine Warfare. I've actually got all three of those, so if you're interested in those communities, please uh, reach out. We can talk about it. Um, other AQDs for warfare qualifications are the 93 Echo for the Navy Expeditionary Supply Corps Officer or the 960 for the CB Combat Warfare. And then there's a, another random group of other AQD qualifications here, uh, such as the 9L1 or L2 for Operational Level of War Staff. I've got that one, actually. The 9X1 Supply Corps Logistics Readiness Center Maritime Operations Center Director, the GOM for graduated the Maritime Staff Operations Course. You've got JP1, 2, and 3 for Operational Planner. I've got the JP1. And then you've got JPM for a, a Maritime Operational Planner Course graduate. And lastly, you've got JPN for Operational Planner, where you graduated the College of Naval Command and Staff or Naval War College. Now, there's a few. Common Supply Corps AQDs assigned by other Navy Personnel Command offices 
uh, in the acquisition certifications arena and the joint qualifications. For acquisition certifications from the defense acquisition community, you've got the AC1, 2, and 3 for contracting, AL1, 2, and 3 for life cycle logistics, AK1, 2, and 3 for, I believe that's financial management, but I'm not positive, AK1. Then you've got AA1, 2, and 3 for program management, and APM for acquisition professional member. There's a few others as well. Uh, they're not listed here in the guide. The acquisition AQD updates are automated through eDACM, which is a different system that manages your acquisition uh, skill sets. Uh, there's a link to click for more information on acquisition career path and record updates. Additional acquisition information is found on the Defense Acquisition University website. And then lastly, you've got joint qualifications. The AQD is JS2 for full joint tour, JS7 for JPM, JPME1, JS8 for JPME2, and then finally, you've got JS5, which shows you're a fully joint qualified officer. All joint AQDs are assigned by PERS 45J. They can be reached at a telephone number here in the document or emailed at mil underscore PERS dash four mail underscore AC underscore JQS underscore manager at navy.mil. That's a mouthful, so come look that up here in the document. Uh, you can also get more information on joint qualifications at the Joint Officer Management website. And for JPM completion options, there's a link for you to click inside this playbook. Uh, feel free to reach out to the Black Worker Counselor with AQD questions, or you can reach out to me too. I'm happy to, to answer any questions you've got. Navy Officer Billet Classification Codes, middle of page 9. NOBICs identify the nature of the billets you held during each tour. From dispersing officer to postal officer to personal distribution officer, make sure NOBICs reflect are reflected in your ODC and that they're accurate. To have NOBICs documented in Block 91 of your ODC, submit an email request to the My Navy HR Help Desk stating what they tell you to do here in, on page 9. Also note that the NOBICs actually appear on your performance summary record in the bottom left-hand corner, and they show up in, uh, in t a terminology, basically. So kind of for boards, the less white space, the better. So you want to make sure that you're taking full advantage of all of your experience and making sure your record reflects that experience through the use of NOBICs as well as AQDs. Top of page 10, Official Military Personnel File, OMPF. Your OMPF, the Permanent Personnel Record, is routinely updated for all personnel actions which occurred during your career. Your servicing PSD, your personnel office, is responsible for forwarding documents for inclusion into your OMPF. But remember, it's your responsibility to ensure your OMPF is accurate. You and your CO are jointly responsible for ensuring that the OMPF is complete and contains information pertinent to your career. Familiarize yourself with enclosures 1 and 2 of BUPERS instruction 1070.27 for information concerning documents placed into this record. The officer photo is a subcategory of the OMPF. All officers are required to have a full-length color photograph at their current rank in their OMPF. Officers are expected to have a current photo within three months of putting on his or her current rank. Photos can be verified by accessing your OMPF on Beepers Online. Photograph requirements are found in NILPERS MAN 1070-180. Photographs must be attached to NAVPERS 1070-884. Ensure your photograph is signed with your full signature before submitting to PERS 31... Excuse me. Before submitting to PERS 312, Charlie. Officers can submit their photo online via BOL's officer photo application, or you can mail hard copies to an address that's listed here on page 10. All right, so that sums up this reading of the It's Your Record playbook. In closing, your officer record is a snapshot representation of the entirety of your naval career. Be sure to check it often to ensure the information contained is current and accurate. In particular, ensure to check it thoroughly and have it checked by others at least six months prior to any statutory or administrative board. Please don't hesitate to contact the supply worker counselor at supply underscore core underscore cc at navy.mil with any questions. And remember, if it's not in your record, it didn't happen. So there's a directory list of phone numbers for the Office of Personnel Supply Corps team. On page 11, feel free to reach out to them with any questions. Uh, again, this It's Your Record playbook was updated in 2021, so I wouldn't expect another update for the foreseeable future. Uh, my name is Jared H. Smith, Commander, Supply Corps, U.S. Navy. 
and feel free to reach out to me for additional guidance, record review, or to just get a coffee, either in person or virtually. So it's your record and it's your life. To your liberty, heck yeah.